dealing with distraction. Welcome to The Hopefulist with me, Wendy McClure. This is where we turn those nasty, negative thoughts into positive and work toward a happy, fulfilled life. Now, let's get started. Thank you so much for joining me for The Hopefulist this week. I hope you are having a fantastic week so far and you had a fabulous weekend, starting out with the quote of the day. Comes from W.H. Murray, who was an explorer, a mountain climber, and self proclaimed committer. Yeah. Until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back, always ineffectiveness. The moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. So, in essence, what he's saying is just make a decision, you know, blank or get off the pot. Just make a decision and move forward with that. No more second-guessing yourself. When you make the decision, don't go back and say, was this the right decision? No, you made a decision. And now whatever happens, happens. Doesn't mean you can't go back and make adjustments, but you've made a decision. So keep going forward and commit to that decision. The good news for today This is the cutest little story. A mama duck decided to take the children to the library. That's right. Mama and her five ducklings stunned staff and students when they wandered wandered into an open door at the University of Nottingham George Green Library. A staff member says they walked in, walked around for a bit before heading back out. The mama looked totally at ease and unflustered. Yeah, that is one badass mama. That is a lot of doing there, uh, bringing the kids into a library where there's a bunch of people. So they checked out the stacks. I guess they didn't find anything interesting. They didn't check anything out. (laughs) I just love it. I think it's adorable. Uh, There is a little video of it. Um, If you would like to check it out, Google Mama Duck, Mama and Ducklings in the library. I'm sure it will come right up for you. So what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about distraction, which is, of course, something that will keep you from the decision that you have just made that we talked about earlier. So um, I have a picture of my dog on the blog post this morning, and she's in the Outer Banks overlooking from the top of the deck the ocean, the birds, everything. So I I was wondering, does she look distracted, or is she the one That is distracting. Yes, she is definitely distracting to me with all of her super cuteness, but that's okay. She's the least of my worries when it comes to getting distracted from my work. There is so much more that needs needs to be put in check. So I'm not sure about you, but distraction seems to be the new world I'm living in. Oh, yes. It's constant and unrelenting, and I'm falling for it every time. I can get up in the morning and have the absolute best intentions for getting my to-do list done. But alas, that ends up falling to the wayside again and again. Then at the end of the day, I feel like I've fallen short of my goals, you know, because I have. And the guilt sets in. If you do it long enough, your brain actually starts to know that you don't mean what you say. And it cannot count on you to get done what you set out to do. That takes a hit on your confidence and intentions. It's like when you say every week, start my workout on Monday, and then never do it. It becomes a joke with the people that you know. They respond with, oh, yeah, sure. And that's what your brain does, too. It eventually realizes it doesn't mean what you say at all. So how do we get a grip on this? Start back slowly. Don't overwhelm yourself because then you will give up altogether. Just start doing, though. Take one action that leads to another action to another. You get the picture. Just start with cleaning off the kitchen table. Then actually clean up the rest of the kitchen. How about tackling that overflowing closet with clothes? Yes, I know this one is a major pain in the butt. But don't you feel so good when it's done? Or spaces in between your clothes, you can actually find things. Not only that, but then you can donate the cast-offs to a charity 
and that helps others as well. This is an area I need to take my own advice on for sure. Play a lot of pickleball takes up a lot of time. Each time I play, it typically lasts from one to three hours. Sometimes I play twice a day. Yes, this is distracting me from my work, but I love it and it's really good exercise. So I'm not going to stop, but it doesn't mean I can't get anything else done throughout the day. Yet that's been my life all summer. I've bashed myself constantly this summer for not getting enough work done because I know I'm capable of doing more than I have been. But bashing myself is not going to push me to do more. What will is giving myself grace. Moving forward from where I am right now. There's no use berating myself for all of the things I didn't do this summer. It's over. It's done. It is what it is. But I know I can do better. And for me, personally, setting up a schedule is how it will start to get done. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. And get a routine that helps me be more productive. Because right now, I just keep telling myself what I need to do and how much I'm not doing. What typically happens is I just don't feel like doing a certain thing that needs to be done, you know. And that's the top of my list. So I put that off and put that off. And so not only does that not get done, but neither does anything else on my list. Because I, you know, usually start at the top and work my way down. For example, since uh, going to a weekly podcast versus a daily seems to, I have to push myself harder and harder to sit down and record the darn thing. It's not that I don't like doing it. I think it's just that an object already in motion tends to stay in motion theory. You know, that's why it was theoretically easier for me to do it every day. So now instead of pushing off the podcast recording every week, I'm starting to batch them for the month. I will take one day or maybe a week to do them for the entire month. Then they'll be done and actually released on time. (laughs) What do you know? But I've also decided if I feel like I'm going to avoid something that I will skip over it for the time being. It's better to move on to other things than to get stuck with doing nothing all day long. I've been putting pressure on myself to do things that aren't necessarily fun but needs to be done. You know, stuff for the business like batching, social media posts, and brainstorming new ideas to offer. Plus, I've been meaning to journal on a couple of issues I've been dealing with, and that is something I always tend to put off. But I'm very aware, uh, very aware it needs to be done at some point. And that's an ongoing thing, the journaling. So, you know, just do it. We have so many distractions we deal with on a daily basis. First and foremost, I'm sure you can guess, is social media. A lot of us pick up our phone the moment we get out of bed. I'm guilty of it too. That sends us down a rabbit hole way too early in the day. And there are times we are on there for so long we don't even realize it. I tend to get lost in TikTok from time to time. I was discussing this with my cousin one day. She asked me if I ever got a post saying it may be time to take a break was actually shocked to hear a social media company would do that, so bravo to them. But no, that has never happened to me, so I guess I'm not as bad as she is, at the very least. She says it happens about at the hour mark. The worst part of social media is, it's just always there. It's waiting for you. How many times have you intended to start doing something, but you just want to check Facebook one more time? Then it's a half hour later. We actually know exactly what we're doing. We are putting off something that we don't want to do and are having fun instead. Instant gratification. Having fun watching other people's lives. But that is a conversation for another time. Now, the best way to break this distraction habit is to focus on your priorities first thing in the morning. I'm not sure what your morning looks like. I have the luxury of an easygoing morning with nowhere to be at a certain time, which I am grateful for after 20 plus years of jumping out of bed, racing around the house to get ready and out the door. But if you have a few minutes, it would be so beneficial to write down your top three priorities for each day after you do your gratitude journal, of course. If you can get down those three most important things that you need to have done, then you are way ahead of most of the world. Then arrange your schedule to get those things done. Three things every day. Do you realize how much ass kicking you will be doing if you can do this and keep it up? Yeah, 
lots of ass kicking going on. So compared to my track record this summer, I will be a, like a brand new productive person moving in a shaking. Now, they don't have to be the biggest things in the world. They just have to be things that need to get done. Once you get one thing done, you move on to the next. Then the momentum will keep you going to do more and more. Hopefully, if you can start out this way every day, then you will be getting done much more than you are now and more than the majority of people you know. When I say write out your top priorities first thing in the morning, that also means before checking email, texting your spouse, making breakfast for the household. Once you start doing any of those things, you get caught up in what everyone else needs before determining what your goals and needs are for the day. So make it a priority to get this list of three things done right away or do them the night before. It will change the way you live your life. Now, go on out there and start making things happen. Coming up soon is the Love Yourself Challenge. It's a free five-day challenge that will urge you to find things to love about yourself. Yes, not only is it possible, I know you may think it isn't, but I thought that for most of my life, and now I do. So not only is it possible, but it's necessary for a truly happy and fulfilled life. I can show you how to start making that transition from not liking yourself or being neutral about how you feel about yourself to actually liking yourself and maybe loving yourself one day. Because what they say is true. You really can't enjoy your life until you come to accept who you are and the way you live your life. That's not to say you can't try to improve yourself while you love yourself. You totally can. But you will never get anywhere good in this life by hating yourself. And I will have more details to follow. If you like today's episode, please leave me a review and hit the subscribe or follow button. And please, please, please go share this with your friends. I would be most grateful. Now, go on out there and be badass. I'm here cheering you on. Thank you for listening to The Hopefulist. Now, don't you feel good? Make sure you come back next week. See you then.